Welcome Wargamers, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough, and today I wanted to take a little bit of a hip shot at a topic that's come up a few times, I'm not really quite sure why it keeps coming up, and that is the usage of chess clocks in Warhammer. It's this topic that like, mostly it's on Twitter from what I see, of just every once in a while it's a popular thing that people just like to revisit, and a lot of times it's after major events that maybe used chess clocks, talked about using it, or people who had bad experiences with their opponent kind of stalling for time. And so what I wanted to do in this video is break down the issue, see both sides of it, and give you my thoughts. It's on my mind, so I thought I'd just, you know, flick on the camera and have a chat. If you like these kind of videos, please just let me know. So why do people want to use chess clocks, okay? This is actually something that I get asked in the comments. Even though I, I very much propagate the idea that I am not a competitive person, people do ask, like, how come there's a debate? Well, if you're new to the game, here's the issue. If you're at a, an event, let's say a tournament, it could be either three rounds or five rounds, and uh, the stipulations typically are when the clock runs out, meaning you know, however long the, the game is, usually it's like two and a half hours to three hours, depending on what kind of event it is, what the point values are. When the clock runs out, um, you put your dice down and just that's the state of the game. Many events have started to say like, you can't go into the next round if you don't think there's enough time for you and your opponent to both go. That's what we did at Vault Wars. Usually what that means is we got to round four and we're like, uh, okay, this is pretty clear how this is gonna pan out. And that's all they're saying is don't, you know, don't put undue pressure on people. Uh, the reason that that could be a problem though is simply because uh, if one player purposefully takes their time, meaning goes really, really slow, we call this slow play, it's very original, you can imagine. Uh, but if someone slow plays you, then they can manipulate when the game ends. So for example, uh, my bone splitters would be a perfect army to slow play someone. I don't do it, but you could. And by that I mean you meticulously move one model at a time because I as the bone splitters player know because I get to do a pre-game move, I'm gonna be way high on victory points early on. So if I just grind my opponent out of their soul and will to live for three hours, I'm gonna win because the game's gonna end before my opponent can catch up on victory points. And you know what? I, I've seen it happen, uh, not in this game, but over in War Machine and Hordes, and we'll talk about that in a second. But the truth is that is such a minuscule number of people who would do that and just honestly care to even do that. It's a huge investment of their time too. So that is sort of like the mythical villain that exists. You know, it, it does exist. There's people who will do that to try and cheat the system and all these kinds of things, but they're very rare. And so chess clocks are a possible solution to this by monitoring each player's time. There's a few ways to use chess clocks, whether it's breaking down by individual's turn. Um, there's also like having a timer set for the game round and this way you can measure who's taken the majority of time. Like you mix it around so you can see who's taking longer. There's a bunch of ways to track it and use time data that a chess clock can do and every event would do it differently in theory. The protest to using chess clocks is typically something, uh, it's a barrier to entry for newer players because now not only are you trying to dump loads of information upon them, but you're doing it in a time crunch method, right? There is a literal clock ticking as opposed to most Warhammer when, you know, I was just at Vault Wars, had a great time. I forgot a rule and I said, hey, listen, you know, I know it's the middle of the hero phase, but this said it had to go down to the start of the hero phase. Do you mind if I do that? Everybody's cool with it. But if you are having those same mental gymnastics, but now you feel the pressure of a time crunch, that's a different game. One that many people don't find fun. Keep in mind that some things are nebulous. You know, when you're Talking about chess clocks in the context of chess, your timer hits your side, you move a piece, you click it, and it goes back to your opponent. Because in like, actions are action reaction, and they're very like, you can tell exactly what's happening. The only third option is that somebody pauses to think. That's it. Whereas in Warhammer, I roll to hit, I roll to wound, now you have to roll to see successes. Well, how do I start to measure how how long you're taking when you're counting successes or fails? And, and maybe you take a little too much time rolling that ward save, even though all of those things are happening on, uh, on my turn, it's still my time, but you have an opportunity to do things. What I'm saying is, and I hope this is coming clear, uh, it's messy. It's a messy concept because this game doesn't really seem to function well with the idea of measuring time. As noted by the fact that Warhammer 40K takes like seven hours to play now. That was a joke, it was hyperbole. And so that's why I think this topic comes up so much is because for the people who don't mind it, you know, it's like, oh yeah, we invite this into our tournament setting, uh, 
tournament off, uh, goers often have a lot of practice with their list so that mental crunch of time isn't nearly as stressful to them but that's the reason that they practice and practice and practice and get good at the game you know that's the skill trade-off that they made other players are very against it because it feels like it you know impedes upon uh, what they experience the hobby to be there are more pros and cons against chess clocks but i'm just giving you an example a few examples to explain why it's such a messy thing there's a problem and it's one option that doesn't quite feel right to everybody to address it and so i wanted to give kind of a summation of what i think the actual issue is and just have a discussion so whenever you play a game of warhammer with a friend okay let's say you're part of the same gaming group you meet up once a week and maybe he's not your best friend but you kind of know this guy he's a positive acquaintance right and you go hey let's play a game warhammer okay you line up the things uh choose your table you know battle plan all that kind of stuff you and that opponent have some decisions to make. There's almost a pre-game conversation that's gonna have to happen. What kind of game do we wanna play? Like, are we trying to be narrative and fluffy? Do we wanna take the time to create a cool scene and have like characters involved? Like, you know, our little, not super lore heavy, but just this little fun story that we're playing out on the table. Are we prepping for an event? Do we wanna just be absolutely cutthroat and point things out as we go to help each other refine our play styles. Those are two very opposite ends of the spectrum, but you know, they represent a lot of players. I mean, that's most people fit somewhere in between there. And amongst the two of you, uh, or more depending on what kind of game you're playing, of course, you can all decide to use chess clocks or not. It is a one-on-one -on -one decision between you and your opponent as you try to figure out what kind of game you wanna play. When folks are adamant against chess clocks, my simple answer is then just don't use them. For real, it's it's you and your opponent making the game. Just because an event or something uses them doesn't mean you have to, that's ridiculous. The General's Handbook is the standard way to play Warhammer in all of its different, you know, open narrative match, that kind of stuff. And none, none clocks are not mentioned in there, don't worry about it. I hear your arguments that like it ruins games and that simply isn't true. I started this hobby, uh, the grand hobby of Wargaming with War Machine and Hordes and they have an incredible cool format called Death Clock, which is meant to be like chess, but but the reason that that totally works is because the format itself built time measuring into its equation. So like lists are decided by time efficiency as well as their effectiveness and it's a new puzzle for gamers to play. That to me was the coolest crap ever. So the argument that like chess clocks don't belong in wargaming period I think is, is ludicrous provided the game's design is inclusive to using chess clocks which I'm not convinced Warhammer is but I don't think, I don't know, you could just do whatever you want. Make it a format. Now, the reason I, I addressed that side first, right? Because I'm not pro clock. I don't actually care. A round ends whenever my opponent says, all right, I think we're done. That's it. <laughs> Whether they're not having fun or I'm crushing them on VP or I'm getting crushed, I don't really care. But the reason I wanted to bring that up is that first thing that I mentioned, that discussion between you and your opponent, okay? Um, when you go to an event, so we're now we're shifting from the people who are very much opposed to using chess clocks to folks who are very much in favor of them or at least open to the idea and that's often tournament goers because that's where you see real disparity in time okay um for those folks chess clocks offer a lot because it is effective at at least revealing bad actors when people can actually see how much time someone is taking for their round it's easy to understand why people get frustrated and so having that you know again revealed information is very useful to a tournament organizer. But here's the thing, when you go to an event, that discussion between the two players that I talked about earlier, that is done for you already. Any questions about, you know, turn length and, you know, list building and all, all of those things, what kind of event it is, what the extent of it is, and what this game is trying to accomplish are all dictated by the tournament organizer. If they are using chess clocks and you don't like that, don't go to the event. That's how you give your opinion on it. I mean, and I do suggest writing a polite email uh, to them and just being like, hey, listen, you know, I don't really care for, for all the clocks and that kind of stuff. I want a more narrative experience. That's fine to want something different. And I hear the arguments of like, uh, you know, I hear them. I, I see them on Twitter between people having these exchanges. Well, what if that's the only, you know, regular event in that person's area? Then you compromise and you say, you know what? I want to hang out with people and enjoy Warhammer uh, with this very niche community. I'm willing to abdicate and have the discussion that the TO wants to have. 
That's just it. That's just part of a collaborative game experience. I don't know what to tell you. The minute you're not at an event where someone's having that conversation for you, you get the power to have it with your opponent again and you guys can decide whatever you want to do. Keep in mind, most games of Warhammer are not events. They're just people at like their local game store having fun rolling dice. And it doesn't actually matter what a couple of events do. Which now I'm realizing this is just a really long video to say do whatever you want and don't yuck somebody else's yum. This idea that somehow like the game changes because a few events use a tool that exists for other games. Conversely, not every single TO is going to gravitate one way or the other. There have always been major events that do their own thing. And I just don't think that's gonna stop. So like, do whatever, vote with your dollar, try to encourage people to do other kinds of gaming. If that's something you are interested in, show them the benefits of it. You know a great way to get people to try your way of doing things is to first try theirs. It's called diplomacy. So, I mean, that's to me is just laying it all out there. As far as my personal opinion, I'll be honest, um, I've never really had a need for chess clocks. I don't see them as adding anything, but I also don't play at many major GTs. The last one I was at, Vault Wars, and then the one before that was like Nova 2019. Um, I did not experience nor hear about anyone having like true slow play things. Uh, I've only seen reports online and, and that kind of stuff and I always take some of it with a grain of salt. That being said, like I said before, Death Clock War Machine was my favorite format of, of that particular game because it forced really creative list design. So I would love to see that in Warhammer. I think that being its own thing would be highly unique. And if I was traveling to a, um, a store that, you know, used uh, chess clocks or for an event that used them, um, yeah, I would just probably get there like 10 minutes early and ask the TO, I need you to show me how how you want this to be used. And that's it. Because like I said before in the very beginning, there's different ways of using time as a measurement for stuff, whether it's by round or by action, that kind of thing. So um, just explain, you know, have them explain because now the onus is on them to explain what they expect from you and learn and try it out. But you're also talking to someone that like after hour three of a game, I'm like, I'm done. I want a coffee. Does anybody else want a coffee? That's like literally all I was thinking. <laughs> round three of all horse. I was like, I'm done. But since my general strategy in all war games is to get the army that does nothing but run forward, dies, and punches hard, i.e. bone splitters, beasts of chaos, those kinds of things, um, it's never been an issue. If you have any questions or thoughts about the whole thing, I'd love to hear them. Again, there's no reason to be uncivil. Be cool. Be kind. I don't really worry about it, though. You guys are a great community. Very, very few things have ever been flagged for uh, abusive language and that kind of stuff. So I happen to think that my fans are a cut above the rest. That's, of course, just me being boastful. Anyway, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching, listening, and I'll catch you next time. Happy Wargaming.